the Southern Raiders. Highly anticipated episode. Oops. Is that a bomb? Damn. Crushing you. Saving okay, your life. I'm not crushed. You can get off me now. <laughs> I'm about to make some Katang fans very unhappy in this episode. I can already feel it. There she is. She looks nuts now. That face. What are you doing here? You mean it's not obvious yet? I'm about to celebrate becoming an only child. Oh, she's lost it. I guess her being betrayed by her friends was really the final final straw. I think I've been fairly consistent on this channel being a proponent of the idea that Azula is human and in some ways relatable and that you can see how she got to where she is and she wasn't born evil it's just kind of she's a victim of her family and circumstance and ever since they introduced Tylee and, and Mei those two were the most humanizing elements of Azula's character. And now that she has lost them there doesn't seem to be a whole lot left in that category. It just seems like She's just losing it. Azula's fire flying would come in really handy right about now. The Fire Nation can't separate our family again. It'll be okay. It's not forever. That hurts. They had just reunited. Nice rock shield. How did that happen? How did he land on the ship? He's catching up to her. Wow. That's so great. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Classic. That was great. That one moment was to frame their powers sort of being equalizing. That's a classic shot, right? Like the double colored energy power meeting and exploding. Nice. Never count Azula out. Of course she did. Yeah. <laughs> she's gone like full psycho. She was always half psycho, now she's just full psycho. Wow, camping. It really seems like old times again, doesn't it? It's sad to think this might be my last chance to see the gang camping out. It takes me back. If you really wanted to feel like old times, I could uh, chase you around a while and try to capture you. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting better at joking. Uh -huh. Oh, she's upset. <laughs> Who knew after all those times he tried to snuff us out today, he'd be our hero. So everyone's come around completely except for Katara. I'm glad they didn't gloss over it. I think it is something important for Katara. I don't deserve this. Yeah, no kidding. What's with her? Hmm. So just my gut instinct about this. The first and most obvious thing is that Katara probably extended the most trust to him initially right before the big betrayal at Ba Sing Se. It does make sense why she is still hurt by that. Another thing that occurred to me, and this is kind of me projecting a little bit of my own life into the show rather than what's actually there from evidence, but someone like Katara, who cares so much about the feelings of others, might also expect other people to care that much about her own feelings. There's this idea of love languages, or the idea that there are certain ways people like to show love, and certain ways people like to be shown love, and they're not the same for everyone. And I think for Katara, the way she both likes to show love and to be shown love is to have people clearly care about her feelings. She cares a lot about other people's feelings, and so she wants to feel like the rest of the group also cares about her feelings. And to someone like that, it might feel like the group is not caring about her feelings by accepting Zuko. Like, what about me? Why aren't people taking my side? It can be a very difficult misunderstanding to get over because people are really rooted in, in the way they think of showing affection and, and expressing love for, for others. This isn't fair. Everyone else seems to trust me now. What is it with you? Oh, everyone trusts you now? <laughs> Oh no, he pulled the same thing with May last episode, where it's like, you don't get it. What's wrong with you, you know? No one wants to hear that. I was the first person to trust you, remember? Back in Ba Sing Se. And you turned around and betrayed me. Betrayed all of us. Yeah, that's true. And she has every reason to be bitter about that. It takes a lot of self-reflection and deep forgiveness to move on past an actual betrayal, like a real betrayal. You carry those things for a very long time on this. You can really get a, a grip on it. And I think part of the reason why it's so pervasive, why betrayal lingers so long, is because it's hard to free yourself from blame. You can sort of feel like it's my fault for 
creating this situation where they would want to betray me or I should have seen it coming and that can be very threatening because once you've been betrayed it's hard to trust your own ability to evaluate others and if you don't have that then as a human being you you really don't have much we rely so heavily on friends and family and lovers that without the ability to properly judge character it's scary and that cuts deep it's something you carry with you for a long time until you learn not to blame yourself what can i do to make it up to you maybe you could reconquer bossing say in the name of the earth king or i know you could bring my mother back it's a really difficult situation. It's difficult for Katara because she's experienced that pain. She has to carry that memory. It's also difficult for Zuko because he did something wrong and he has to remember that about himself. People don't really talk about that, but if you're a reasonable person, if you do things wrong, you also suffer because you have to live with that fact. You're the one who has to look at yourself in the mirror. Oops. Wrong tent. Sorry. Do you need to talk to Sokka too? Nope. Not me. <laughs> huh? What was she? Was she going into Sokka's tent? Hmm. Well, hello. Oh, she was. The uh, Zuko. Yes. Why would I be expecting anyone different? Did he eat that rose? She hates me. Katara doesn't hate anyone, except maybe some people in the Fire Nation. No, I mean uh, <laughs> like not you. people who are good but used to be bad. I mean stop. But I want you to tell me what happened to your mother. What? Wow. I think somehow she's connected her anger about that to her anger at me. Whoa, that's very perceptive. I appreciate the fact that Zuko and Sokka seem closer after their experience at Boiling Rock. As quickly as they came, they just left. I didn't know we'd lost our mother. Thanks for stopping by! <sighs> Get out. I thought he'd never leave. Suki! <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, whatever. He knows it anyway now. I waited out here all night. What do you want? It's kind of creepy. I know who killed your mother. I'm going to help you find him. Wow. I don't know what to think about that, honestly. <laughs> Getting revenge? Is it your turn to take a little field trip with Zuko? Yes, it is. <laughs> I love how the, they're, they're so honest about what's going on. That's funny. We're going to find the man who took my mother from me. Um, and what exactly do you think this will accomplish? Yeah, I'm with Aang on this one. <sighs> I knew you wouldn't understand. I do understand! How do you think I felt about the Sandbenders when they stole Appa? How do you think I felt about the Fire Nation when I found out what happened to my people? Yeah, that's true. Everyone has experienced great loss. And also, Katara was the one who was there for Aang at that moment. So it's reasonable for him to want to return the favor there. This is about getting closure and justice. I don't think so. I think it's about getting revenge. Maybe that's what he deserves. You sound like Jet. It's not the same. Mm. Jet attacked the innocent. Katara, she was my mother too. Then you didn't love her the way I did. Katara! The monks used to say that revenge is like a two-headed rat viper. While you watch your enemy go down, you're being poisoned yourself. But this is an air temple preschool. It's the real world. I feel like I have no choice. Wow. You do have a choice. Forgiveness. That's the same as doing nothing. It's easy to do nothing, but it's hard to forgive. Wow, this is... this is... Amazing. They really just laid that all out on the table. I really like that they drew the comparison with Jet there because that is something that keeps coming up in the show. People use justice as an excuse for revenge and they kind of lose sight. I'm also really grateful that the show tackled this about Katara in a mature way. For a while I felt like she's somewhat overconfident in her own moral compass and her ability to deliver justice. She tends to want to take things into her own hands and act emotionally in a way that is not totally for the best interests of the group or actually for justice. It's more for her own emotional drive. When she tells Sokka that he didn't love their mother as much as she did, she's clearly just acting out. Part of it is she feels misunderstood and she feels allyless and she doesn't know what to do with her emotions. She hasn't ever known what to do with her emotions other than use them to drive her to try to write injustices that she sees in the world. What she hasn't worked out yet and what I guess this episode is about is coming to terms with how to balance that and how to see that a little bit more healthily. It's impossible. It can feel impossible for sure. And I think maybe in some ways forgiveness actually is the wrong term. 
maybe another way of looking at it would just be to have closure on it in a way where you feel no lingering doubt about what you have to do in response you know like to come to terms with the tragedy in a way where you're not constantly questioning yourself and questioning what you should have done or need to do in the future or what it implies about you rather than forgiveness for the other person i think the goal is something like forgiveness for the situation if that makes sense like just to have it resolved peacefully in yourself where you see it for what it was and you can move on from it in a way that allows you to continue your life you know having used lessons from the pain to your advantage rather than to your detriment it's okay because i forgive you practice what you preach Did I give you any ideas <laughs> don't try to stop us i wasn't planning to this is a journey you need to take you need to face this man mm -hmm. but when you do please don't choose revenge let your wow. anger out and then let it go I love that really nuanced take from Aang, understanding that it's something she needs to do but hoping she does it well. That's something we saw in the past a lot with Zuko and I think one of the mistakes Iroh made, you know? Like Iroh was always telling Zuko just not to pursue things, but we know now that Zuko had to pursue them, it's just he had to make the right choices while he was pursuing them. This has come up a lot in this show, I think it's true that you have to follow the course, you know, follow that pull, but then like do your best to stay open to the response you get from the world while you're doing that in order to really learn where you are in it and what you really want to do in it. You're pretty wise for a kid. Thanks, Sokka. Usually it's annoying, but right now I'm just impressed. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, can I borrow Momo for a week? Why do you need Momo? Of all things. What kind of shady stuff is Sokka getting up to? Zuko's been very busy lately. All these infiltration missions. Did you just waterbend the ink? That's smart. Bam. On patrol near Whaletail Island. Wow, in and out. I'm not the helpless little girl I was when they came. Mom! Just let her go. Oh no, did she witness it? Get out of here! Mom, I'm scared. When we got there, the man was gone. And so was she. Your mother was a brave woman. I know. Damn. Who are you? You don't remember her? You will soon. Trust me. What? Is she bloodbending? Wow, she really... She's on the line of, like, no return here. You gotta be really careful, you know, because these things, they stay with you forever. These moments where you do wrong. You feel justified in the moment, but they create a stain on your conscience that you can never forget and you spend the rest of your life wondering how could i have been capable of that and am i still capable of that it's not him you must be looking for yan ra oh no he's an old man gardening you lazy piece of work i need something yes mother it's beautiful the way this is drawn and animated Whoever you are, take my money. Take whatever you want. That's not what they want. You know who I am. You're the little water tribe girl. Who's the waterbender? There are no waterbenders here. Oh no, she's protecting Katara. It's me. Take me as your prisoner. I'm afraid I'm not taking prisoners today. She was protecting the last waterbender. Who? Me! There's just nothing inside you. You're pathetic and sad and empty. As much as I hate you, I just can't do it. Good for her. She made the right choice. I mean, Katara can't ever bring her mother back, but she did get one thing from this encounter. She at least proved to herself that she could have taken revenge. I think one reason why we're so motivated for revenge in some situations is because we feel powerless. We feel like we've been completely victimized and it's terrifying. And so we fantasize about revenge as a way of restoring things to their, their proper balance. But Katara, even without killing him, she did that because she put things back in her own hands in a way. The choice was all hers to make, and she made the one that she thought was best. And I think she did make the right choice because she can now live without that stain on her conscience that she killed an old man, an old pathetic man out of revenge. This guy is not so lucky. He's going to live on with that knowledge of what he did and the fact that he was beaten. And he'll carry the knowledge forever that he only is alive because of the mercy of someone who he seriously wronged. 
Katara! Are you okay? I'm doing fine. I'm proud of you. I wanted to take out all my anger at him, but of course. I couldn't. I don't know if it's because I'm too weak to do it, or mm -mm. if it's because I'm strong enough not to. Definitely the latter. But I am ready to forgive you. That's kind of what I was talking about. I don't think that forgiveness of the person who did you wrong is really that important as a goal. I think it's more like a letting go of the situation in a way that's healthy, like moving past it. Not getting stuck and dwelling in the things that you can't control or can't change anymore. In this situation for Katara, it means dealing with it to the point where she doesn't freak of that guy ever, but she doesn't hold grudges where they're not due. So for Zuko, I mean, he's not the one who did that. He doesn't need to represent all the evil that's been done to her. She can see him more as the person he is now, which I think is, is great. I think the goal is to see things as they are and to see people as they are, not how you're afraid they are. I'd love to make a Zatara joke, but it doesn't feel like that to me, honestly. It does really feel like they're friends. Violence wasn't the answer. It never is. Then I have a question for you. What are you gonna do when you face my father? Mmm. Mmm. Good question. Wow. What a packed episode that was. Really heavy, deep themes. I respect that they took it so far. They really took it to an interesting place, you know, it wasn't surface level values, it was like, tough decisions. That's tough, buddy. Fantastic episode. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you next time for the last episode before the four part finale.